from the rest of the bullets. While Jamie starts making a bullet mold, Adam's hard at work on their intended victim. This is actually a model of my face uh, that uh, Jamie and I did probably about 10 years ago. The dummy will be made from ballistics gel, a substance used by the FBI. Made from animal products, the gel mimics human flesh. The dummy will have to be chilled for 48 hours. Where are they going to find a big enough freezer? Wow, that's made of jello? That's made of jello, 200 pounds of jello. Feels good. Right over the it's over to the cool room at the local deli. Thank you very much, Sunil. Sure, no problem. You guys coming for lunch? We got jello on special. <laughs> How's the bullet mold coming along? I'm trying to find a drill that will replicate the size of the, the bullet itself so that I can uh, make a mold. A real bullet sits in a case, which is loaded with gunpowder. When the trigger is pulled, a primer ignites the gunpowder, and the explosion drives the bullet out of the case and down the barrel. Jamie will have to load his ice bullet into a cartridge for firing. That means getting the real bullet out. I barely see anything down there. That's a rim fire. Now you're only supposed to use this tool on certain types of ammunition. But Adam never reads instructions. You know, I could have read the directions and it wouldn't have made any sense to me because I don't know what a rim fire bullet is. I would have been blissfully proceeding without thinking I was in danger. Well, I was raised up on a farm. Them, them's varmint bullets. Hey, be careful, you got, you got stuff in there. The ice bullet mold is ready to go. The two aluminum blocks screw together, forming a perfect bullet shape. Jamie pours water into the mold and dunks it in liquid nitrogen. Looks good. Looks like a bullet to me. But getting the bullet out of the mold in one piece is proving a problem. The alarm bells are ringing already. If an ice bullet is too brittle to survive the mold intact, how could it be fired from the barrel of a rifle? A bullet does not stop accelerating once it leaves the gun. It actually gets propelled by heated gases exploding from the barrel. Is it really possible that a simple ice projectile, no matter how cold, could withstand such forces and reach its target intact? This man says no. Dr. Roger McCarthy is the chairman of Exponent, a company whose success comes from the failure of others. He spent his life investigating everything, from faulty massage chairs to major disasters. He's also studied the magic bullet theory, in particular the idea that JFK was killed by a magic bullet, fired by a second sniper on the grassy knoll. But Dr. McCarthy's magic bullet isn't made of ice. It's metal, hollowed out, and filled with liquid. A liquid bullet was one of the few ways to guarantee that all the energy of the bullet would be dissipated in the target and there would be no exit wound. Because a bullet exiting the target is a complete waste of energy. You never want to see that as a professional assassin. In the wake of JFK's assassination, the magic bullet theory was dismissed for one simple reason. The sniper would have been on the right of the motorcade. But there was no exit wound on the left side of the president's head. But because it has less mass than a conventional bullet, a liquid bullet wouldn't exit the target. I was able to show in my experimentation that the pressure wave being introduced by the bullet into the skull and then bouncing off the other side will in fact expel all the parts of the bullet out. Ice projectiles. What do these people think of next? Fruity flavors? No. No, it's this. But the Mythbusters aren't beaten I've seen yet. stuff to make a bullet out of. Imagine you're an overworked forensics expert. Would you be looking for a slug made of meat? What did you do today, honey? <laughs> I made a meat bullet. Is that what the kids are calling it these days? <laughs> That's a hard little steak. That's a loaded meat bullet. The result? Well, Adam's mouth's watering. I would bet you that uh, this is the most successful test we have. Jamie's on a roll. He tries again. This time, a bullet made of simple gelatin. I've got a cold. <laughs> this is looking really promising because it's not at all brittle. Why don't you mess with that? That's sealed up. 
That's pretty good stuff right there. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a little bit flexible, a little bit hard. It's a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. Meanwhile, some interesting mail has arrived. A reply from the CIA. Operational files of the CIA are exempt from the publication provisions of the Freedom of Information Act. The files that would contain responsive records, if any exist, are not subject to search. What that seems to say is there's almost definitely something like this, but uh, because it's being used, they can't tell us about it. It's not subject to a Freedom of Information Act request. Request denied. Jamie, let's put up a dummy. Time to see if the Mythbusters magic bullets are at home on the range. How you doing there, buddy? How you doing? Yeah, you're doing so good. We're going to shoot you. To make sure everything's above board, we've had to call in one of San Francisco's finest to oversee this shoot. I have a concern about the about what we do if the rifle doesn't fire, actually. If we get the round too cold and uh, when we pull the trigger, it doesn't fire, is it in danger of actually going off if it warms up? Yes, it can. That's why I just wait a few minutes before trying to take it out. Wait a few minutes, yeah. don't approach it, just <laughs> back. Okay. Yeah. Just in case, the guys will fire the rifle using a remote rig. In this case, a piece of string tied to the trigger. Well, that's a nice meat bullet if I ever saw one. But will it make mincemeat of the dummy? Three, two, one. Let's go take a look. The beef bullet exploded. Specks of meat are embedded in the torso. Unfortunately, there's also plenty of ballistics evidence left behind. It looks like half of the half of the uh, the cordite didn't even explode, didn't even ignite. Yeah, I guess it was it less needs loud a, than before. It's a certain amount of, uh, you know, stay in there at Ness. You know, like, you need to <laughs> plug the, plug the uh, cartridge. Stay in there at Ness? Uh, yeah. Is that scientific? Maybe a gelatin bullet will have that elusive stay in there at Ness. The gel is colored with food dye, so it'll show up in the dummy. Go. Ready to fire, guys. Everybody ready? We are all ready. Let's go. There we go. Good. Grab the cord. And three... Two, one. Bullseye. That was a bigger boom. But there's still a problem. The gel bullet struck the dummy at three times the speed of sound and with a force of more than 2,000 pounds per square inch. But even so... It went in about an inch. That's not much penetration. If you compare the gel bullet with the effects of a real Carcano or a 6.65 millimeter round fired from the same rifle, you can see that the frozen gel just won't work if firing over a distance. Now how do I know which, which one's in the chamber? The guys have more success with a smaller firearm okay. at close range. Judging by this, it's the best of all of them. That went, uh, it stayed intact and went all the way to the bone there. Yeah, a point blank range. But if you have to be that close to the target, then you have to fire your magic bullet from something that doesn't look like a weapon. So, Jimmy, what are your thoughts about turning one of these into a gun? Well, do we want to shoot it like a rifle, like, like that? In 1978, an umbrella was the weapon in the sophisticated assassination of a Bulgarian defector. From the center. Georgi Markov was the victim of the most bizarre murder of modern technology, a sophisticated metal pellet fired from an umbrella into his thigh. Analysis showed the poison to be ricin, 70 times more lethal than the cyanide on the right. That umbrella insertion was brilliant and much more effective than an ice bullet. The ice bullet, you know, Bullets are not subtle, and, it, you know, the best bullet draws everybody's attention, including the victims, immediately. In true Mythbusters style, Jamie's going to build his own umbrella gun from scratch. A chamber near the handle will be charged with compressed air from a dive tank. That, that, that's great, Jamie. The air will drive the gel bullet from the umbrella tip at supersonic speed. It's a big call. The CIA would spend years developing such a weapon. Jamie's got three days. I have no idea how fast that's going to pro propel something, but... Uh, I mean, in the realm of what we've done for Mythbusters, isn't this kind of one of the most dangerous things we've tried yet? Probably. I mean, there is a lot of energy in there, and it's not to be underestimated. Like I said, it will remove flesh from your bones. 
we're making a, a super high pressure gun here and so I'm trying to keep it really simple and uh, and also make sure that it's safe and so I'm overbuilding it a little bit so much stuff and it's still not enough just can't get there from here got to make everything from scratch in the butt I'm gonna try one more thing it should hold a little better than that, shouldn't it? One would think so. Jamie's getting frustrated. Air from the scuba tank is getting into the chamber. Unfortunately, it's getting out again almost as fast. I'm a little pissed off. This thing's taking way too long. What's going on with it? One stupid little seal. I'm gonna leave. I have to walk away from it. Yeah. I've been doing this all day. I'm wasting way too much time on it. And when the troublesome Gunbrella is finally tested with a BB... And watch out, watch out. Adam's far from impressed. Yeah, it's only like three quarters of an inch in there. Here, we can... Uh... Okay. About like that? Yeah. Interesting. It looks like it went in deeper. Um say seven inches that's a, that's interesting what did you waste your time did you just waste three days on this could be right off the bat i think it's actually kind of disappointing i mean I spent three days working on this like super high powered uh, air reservoir to fire this thing and this you know 50 dollar bb gun outperformed it right off the bat i could have modified this to fit in that umbrella in a couple of hours Adam scavenges a CO2 canister and trigger from an old air pistol. and ready to go. CO2 cartridge from the pistol. Yeah. Loaded into the barrel, which goes up the center of the umbrella's chamber. And comes out the tip. And uh, the trigger mechanism will be like a ball bearing on a, on a, on a leaf spring going Pink. Because the, that gun fires the same way the other one does, just a weight against that thing. Okay. That pretty cool? Yeah. So umbrella's at 30 paces. Looks like we're going to be pitting your umbrella against my umbrella. My umbrella is going to take you down. <laughs> we'll see about that. Absolutely. You won't even know it's an umbrella. I mean, you won't even know it's not an umbrella. In California, a weapon like this is illegal, but we have police permission and supervision. Umbrella guns loaded, point blank. In three, two, one. Wow. That was really effective. That went all the way into the sternum. I mean, that went all the way in. The projectile is tiny, but could easily carry a lethal dose of poison. Both umbrellas worked better than the real guns. Looking at this 22 hole, Jamie, I see burn marks around the edge, whereas our two umbrella guns left absolutely no evidence at all that it was even a ballistic hit. It's just a hole. Yeah, and they did just as much damage. Absolutely. I mean, I think they're the cleanest things we got today. I'd go with the air gun. I'd go with the air gun myself. And the magic bullet? It seems any substance that would melt inside a human body is too fragile to be successfully fired from a high-powered weapon. So, myth busted? Absolutely. Does Roger McCarthy believe JFK was killed by a liquid bullet fired by a second sniper on the grassy knoll? And the answer is, we'll never know until the National Archives finds President Kennedy's brain. Because President Kennedy's brain was not buried with his body. It was put in a specially sealed container and given to the National Archives for safekeeping. They have subsequently lost the President's brain. <laughs> Coming up next, collect some roadkill and dive for golf balls in gator-infested waters as we search for the world's filthiest, grimiest, and nastiest careers on a world premiere episode of Dirty Jobs.